Hey everybody, this is Miss Dietrich. We're going to take a look at how you might use a Punnett square to make predictions about the offspring, and we're going to look at uh, a couple of different situations here with the alleles. We're going to take a look at situations where we have one of the dogs being uh, what we might call a purebred with the re two recessive alleles, purebred of the having the mixed fur. We're going to take a look at a hybrid or a heterozygous situation where we have the dominant allele for black fur and the lowercase allele, which would be for the mixed or the blended fur. And then we're going to take a look at what if we have the two dominant alleles for black fur, and if we cross any one of these together, what would be the outcome for the offspring? The first one we're going to explore is if we take the recessive situation here, which is the blended fur. So let's say the father dog has that, and the mother dog has the, um, the is hybrid or heterozygous, having two separate alleles, one for the black fur and one for the blended fur what would the offspring look like? So just to make sure you understand how we fill in the pun and square, this box, the one in the upper left corner, what we do is we take these two letters and we put them in the box. And we usually put the uppercase letter first. So we put the uppercase letter here and then this letter would go here. That would be the offspring in this particular case would be have black fur. The phenotype would be black fur. And the alleles or the genotype for this dog would have the dominant allele for black fur and the recessive allele for the blended fur. To figure out what goes in this box, you pull from here and here and put it in here. So again, we have uppercase B and a lowercase b, put it here. Same situation, we have a black furred offspring but is, um, has the recessive allele for the other color fur. Down here, we're taking this letter and this letter and putting it in this box. <coughs> so in this situation, we have the two recessive alleles, therefore uh, the black doesn't mask or cover up this color fur, and that fur color shows through, the blended fur. Same situation here, we're taking this and crossing it with this, so we get two lowercase b's. All right, let's take a look at, let's say um, we, we were lucky enough to get a male and a female puppies, and we were going to take these for the next generation and cross them. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Now, they're both purebred for the, the blended fur, just to make sure you understand. So this bee would go here, and this bee would go here, just so you get where that comes from. So I'm just going to put them back. Here, we, get, we pull from here and here, and that goes in that box. Here, we pull from here and here, and that goes in that box. And from here, we pull from here and here, and right in that box. You can see that 100% of the time, the puppies of these two dogs would always have the blended fur. So we would call them purebred for that particular trait of having the blended fur. Their puppies have that. There's no chance that they would get a black furred puppy given their, um, their genotypes. All right, so now let's take a look at another situation. In this situation, we're taking two dogs that both have black fur, but they have the recessive allele, both dad and mom, have the recessive allele for the blended fur, and we're going to take a look at what, what are the possible outcomes for their puppies. Now in this case, if we take these two letters and put it here, you can see that we're going to get the two dominant alleles for the black fur, so that's going to be a black puppy. In this case, in this case, it's the same situation where we're taking a dominant allele and mixing it with a recessive allele. We're still going to get that genotype of the uppercase and the lowercase allele or dominant recessive, but the phenotype, in other words, the physical appearance of the dog, would have black fur. Now, what's interesting, that's true here and it's here. What's interesting and not really intuitive for most folks is having this kind of dog. You have a dog with the recessive alleles, and it's, a, it's got the blended fur. You wouldn't expect that from two black dogs to get this, but when they have the recessive allele and those both get passed on to the offspring, then there's a chance of that happening. The other situation that we could explore is what if both parents had the two dominant alleles for the black fur and they had puppies? In all four cases, it shows that 100% of the time, the offspring would also inherit the two dominant alleles from mom and dad and pass that on to their offspring. So this would be considered a purebred black furred dog or homozygous because they have the same alleles, black furred dog. So it's interesting to see what the outcomes are. Again, we call these pun and squares. That helps us to predict or make, show the possible outcomes for a given set of parents and what their allele patterns look like.